I'm so happy to welcome you here, Dr. Laura Haynes. Could you tell us briefly uh, about yourself, who you are and why you are here with us? I'm a psychologist in the United States and California. Um, I represent uh, several organizations on the International Federation for Therapeutic and Counseling Choice. I'm on the general board and the um, Science and Research Council and I'm the USA representative in the United States. I also am the, re the um, head of the research and uh, social and lobbying uh, committee for the National Task Force for Therapy Equality. I uh, have testified in several states in the United States defending the right to therapy for people who want to explore their options to their same-sex attraction or gender incongruent identity. Could you give us two keys how to protect um, the right to therapy? I'll give you four. Oh. <laughs> Everyone should have the right to walk away from sexual experiences and practices that don't work for them and don't fulfill them. So the first reason is some people identified as gay or trans and they had LGBT experiences but they didn't find it fulfilling. Mm -hmm. They, not the state, should decide about their, se their sexual attractions and identity. The second reason is some people feel their LGBT feelings and behaviors were brought upon them from uh, trauma, such as childhood sexual abuse. Yes. The American Psychological Association says they're not alone. It says that LGBT feelings are not simply biologically caused by genes, hormones, or brain structures. It says there are always psychological and social influences. And in fact, they're the predominant influence. We know from a recent gene study by Ghana, G-A-N-N-A, -N -N and, and uh, colleagues this year, 2019, yeah. that genes do not cause someone to be homosexual or have homosexual behavior. There are experiences that they have in the environment. So um, the APA handbook says childhood sexual abuse may be one of those. It says that based on research that includes a 30-year study of documented cases of childhood sexual abuse. It also says there are psychoanalytic causes. That means family experiences from the child's point of view. And so some people want help from uh, childhood trauma or wounding experiences in relationships growing up, maybe even from bullying with peers. They want the right to heal, and no one should take that right away from them. The third reason is that some people want to live according to their beliefs and values that bring them joy and that should be respected. And no one should take away their right to that. And the fourth reason is that some people are, have LGBT experiences, but they're in an opposite sex relationship with a person who embraces their sex and is attracted to the opposite sex and um, they don't want to cause a problem that could lead to the ending of that, their marriage and family. They want to save their marriage and family and be able to go on being full-time moms and dads. And no one should take away their right and freedom to do that. So everyone should have the right to walk away from sexual practices or gender experiences that don't fulfill them or work for them, and no one should take away their freedoms and rights. Thank you. I'm so thankful because there, is, there are a lot of values in your speech here. And uh, please tell me, what is your reaction to this conference? It is so exciting. There's so much energy here. People are learning a lot. They're uh, networking with each other. It's a wonderful conference. Thank you. I think the same. Thank you so much.